Hello friends, thank you for watching this video. I am Muhammad and yesterday Microsoft released preview one of .NET 9. And within that release, we can see the direction that Microsoft is taking within the new version of .NET. So let's see what is uh, inside this release and let's see the different implementations and how we can actually download it and install it on our own machine. So let's get started. So as we can see here within this blog post that Microsoft has released on February 13, we can see this is the first version of .NET 9 where they highlight the vision of what they want to include within the next version of .NET. And if we take a look quickly on it, we can can see the main two areas of focus which is going to be cloud as well as ai which comes with no surprises within all of the new features that port this within dotnet 8 so within the cloud enablement there's going to be a lot of focus on native aot there's going to be a lot of focus on aspire so native aot is basically ahead of time compilation which allows our application to run much more faster it has a very low time to boot up so it means it's going to be running very very fast as well it's uh, as currently it's only supported within certain version of uh, current dotnet 8 so it's only available with minimal API and some other ones but within .NET 9 I would reckon it's going to be all across the .NET application so it's not going to be only limited to minimal APIs and the other one is going to be .NET Aspire so .NET Aspire is released within .NET 8 as a preview uh, .NET Aspire basically it's a tool where you're actually able to fully manage a full cloud native enablement uh, solution where you're going to have a lot of alerting monitoring you're going to have dashboard you're going to have uh, logs you're going to have everything you need in order for you to manage your .NET application on the cloud directly enable, uh, enabled from .NET Aspire. I have a full video on it where I can showcase how you can actually utilize it, how you can put your application in it and how you can link your back and front end and make sure you have a 360 view of your application running within .NET Aspire. So I would suggest that this is going to be another main focus because of the main push for cloud native application and .NET Aspire will, it's a definitely good step into that direction. The other one here we can see is tooling for developers. So we can see here native IoT requires a lot of tools to be installed but within .NET 9 it's, gonna, it's not going to be requiring a lot of that and you can see here also a lot of tooling for Aspire as well as Azure. One of the other new things also that has been announced which is .NET and Artificial Intelligence and this comes with no surprise within .NET 8 we got a lot of new features when it comes to ML.NET as well as a lot of AI stuff that's going to be embedded within the .NET framework and that we're going to be seeing with .NET 9 how we can actually leverage this. Uh, I would reckon that there's going to be a lot of new uh, integrations with ChatGPT or the models behind ChatGPTs. We can even see here that there's going to be a lot of updates within ChatGPT and the enterprise data within Azure OpenAI and Cognitive Search. So I would say there's going to be a lot of the push that not only to be utilizing it within Azure, maybe we can have offline models that we can actually utilize it within our .NET applications. So that could be also something really interesting. As well, we can see there's a lot of new support for vectors database like Quadrant and Milvis, which is going to be really, really important for anyone who's working, uh, who's working with AI. And on top of all of that, we can see that there's a lot of different releases so if we take a look at the blog post that has been released on github we can see that there's a lot of a new enhancement that came to different sections of dotnet so we can see dotnet ef core dotnet maui uh, ASP.NET Core, etc, etc. And all of these will basically have a lot of new features embedded in them. So we can take a look at what's new and it will take us to all of the different functionality that has been released within .NET from link to C Sharp to collection to cryptography, etc, etc. If we go here to ASP.NET Core, I think it's a bit limited right now. We can see there is dictionary and polymorphic and general improvement and bug fixes. As well, we can, if we take a look at EF Core, we can see there's a lot of improvements on the queries itself, there is improvements on the actual implementation of uh, parameterization of the queries. And there's a lot, basically it's right now, I would say it's just like the first step into the right direction. And uh, I would expect a lot of new feature enhancement coming our way. So now if you wanna download it and install it in your machine, it's not gonna be really complicated. So all you need to do is just go to binaries, choose the right operating system, and basically from there you can actually download so if you're on mac you can download the x64 arm if you're on m1 or intel x64 similar to windows etc etc so once you download it you're just going to be able to follow the normal installation process and after that you'll be able to see that you have .NET 9 enabled and installed on your machine so this was just a quick video to bring your attention that .NET 9 is already in the work we can actually have access to it from now there's a lot of new enhancements and there's a lot of new functionalities that we should be very excited on if you're interested in this and if you'd like me to make a video more about .NET 9 and all of the different functionality that it contains please let me know and I will make sure to do a dedicated video on this and uh, with that I would say thank you very much for watching and have a great day.